we all know John 3, uh, 16, 17. I'm going to, um, to start there and then I'm going to rewind back just a little bit. Uh, but John 3, 16 says, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. So he didn't send Jesus to judge the world. He Amen. sent Jesus to save the world. And I'm going to rewind back because for a long time in my Christian walk, I didn't even realize that that was Jesus saying that. Yeah. I don't know about you, but, but that, that, when I got the revelation that it was actually Jesus, saying John 3 16 that blew me away yeah uh, but it's part of a conversation that he's having with a man named Nicodemus and he was a Pharisee and I'll, I'll just start there and I'll go through this quickly because I, I believe it really speaks into what we're sharing today uh, so there was a man named Nicodemus a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee after dark one evening he came to speak with Jesus he said rabbi we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. So this is a Pharisee acknowledging that Jesus is from God um, because of the signs and wonders that he was doing at the time. And a Pharisee was just like a religious leader. Wasn't mm. he? Yeah. 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 And, and he was teaching others about, about God. He was a, like an expert, I guess you yeah. could say, in, in uh, the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible. And so Jesus responds to him and he says... I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Wow. And then Nicodemus replies, he says, how can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? <laughs> like, <laughs> I bet you there's a lot of people out there asking the same question. Yeah, and it's a, and it's a good question. When we yeah. say born again, like people are thinking, what are you talking about? Oh, like, you're one of those born again. <laughs> yeah, how, do you, how, does, how does one get born again? And so it's a good question that Nicodemus is asking, and that's why I believe this is such an important conversation that's being had here in the beginning of John 3. And, uh, and so Jesus replies to, to Nicodemus, he says, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life, which is yeah. what it talks about in Titus 3. So don't be surprised when I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it goes. So you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. You yeah. can't explain it. It's not something that we can, can fully understand or comprehend. But we serve a God who created the whole universe yeah. by speaking. He spoke and the whole universe came into existence. Everything we can see, everything that we can feel, everything that we can smell, everything that we can hear came into existence when... God spoke, and so we can't understand everything there is to understand Absolutely. about God. You know, just on that, um, you know, the, the parallel with the, the comparison with wind, mm. um, you, you don't know that the wind exists mm. until you see it actually affects something. Mm. So you, you see it when, it when the wind blows against the tree, you can see the tree move. Mm. You can't see the Holy Spirit but you can see it when it has an effect on someone's life. It's so obvious. And that's what we're talking about yeah. right here. Our it, testimonies yeah. are evidence of, of the whole, God. The work of the Holy Spirit. I can tell you, people will go, oh my goodness, he couldn't have gone this far this quick unless God turned up. Mm. And you know, what happened to Pat <laughs> is not possible. <laughs> Like you, you get people who are in rehabs and they would go, that is not possible to do that. But things are possible through the Holy Spirit and being born again. Yeah, and that is why it's so important that we share our testimonies yeah. because our testimonies are evidence of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ and, uh, and, so, and that work of the Holy Spirit to come and, and send and wash and, and renew us. And, uh, and so Nicodemus asks, how are these things possible? 
Good question. And Jesus replies, you are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things. I assure you, we tell you what you know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned but the Son of Man. He has come from heaven. And just as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. And that's when we get to John 3.16. Uh, he's talking about himself, that God sent him so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And, and what he's talking about with the, with the bronze snake in the wilderness, that's in Numbers 21, where uh, the, the people of, have, the, the Israelites have been bought out of Egypt. They've been bought out of slavery. Uh, and I won't go into the story, but they've been bought out of Egypt. They've come through the Red Sea. Like, clearly these guys believe in God because they've just, like, walked through the middle of an ocean that's been parted by the power of God. They end up in the wilderness, and God is giving them daily bread called manna. He's giving them food every day, and they start complaining. <laughs> they, they start complaining about this, this, uh, this manna, and they're like, we just want to go back to Egypt. It's a slave mentality. And uh, so these snakes come and, and uh, Moses goes to God in, in prayer because the people are dying. The snakes are killing the people. And Moses goes to God in prayer and, and God says to Moses, forge a bronze snake and put it on a tree. And when people look at the bronze snake on the tree, they will be healed. This is a foreshadow of Jesus. And it's what he's talking about here because when people looked at that snake on the tree, they were healed. That was faith. And it was a foreshadow of what was, what was to come because, you know, God created the whole universe with his words and then he made us in his yeah. image for a loving relationship with him. But something went wrong. We all sinned. And that first sin was, was disobedience uh, to God in the garden. He'd said not to eat from the tree. They took an apple from the tree. And I don't know, have you ever taken an apple from a tree? Have you ever picked an apple yeah, from a tree? Yeah. Have you ever tried to put the apple back on the tree? Uh, you can't do it. Though. You sure. can't. You can't do it. It is impossible. Like you could maybe do it with duct tape or something <laughs> like that, but you cannot put the apple back on the tree. And that's the same with sin. You can't unsin. Yeah. That's <laughs> like once you've done it, and Adam and Eve knew that they'd messed up. They knew straight away that they'd messed up, and they were trying to cover themselves up. They were put out of the garden, and uh, you know that was when sin entered into humanity and every single one of us has sinned. Sin is anything from lying to murder and we've, we've all done it and it's a, it's a, it's a curse and the, the punishment of sin is death and that's yes. eternity. Eternity separated from God in a place called hell but God didn't want that mm. for us and that's why it says here in John 3.16 that God sent Jesus yeah. And something the Lord said to me a while ago, and, and it's been resonating with me ever since, is that God sent Moses to set his people free from Egypt. Or God sent Moses to get his people out of Egypt. But God sent Jesus to get Egypt out of his people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow. Because we were slaves to sin. It says in, in Romans, we were slaves to sin. Yeah. Like we we couldn't not sin. That's what that means. Like it was it was impossible for us not to sin. Every single person was a slave to sin. And so God had to do something radical to get sin out of us. And it says in 2 Corinthians 5 21 that he who knew no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So Jesus, who was perfect, is fully God, fully man. He was perfect. He lived a perfect life. He became sin. He became the curse. He became the apple. And he was hung on a tree. He was nailed to a rugged cross for you and me. 
but not just for you and me, as you and me. Because his death, his crucifixion is our crucifixion. It says in Galatians 2.20 that I was crucified with Christ and now it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. So his death was my death. His burial was my burial. And his resurrection is my resurrection. Yeah, that's so good. And that is what it means to be born again. That is what it, it means to be born again. That, that snake on the tree was a foreshadow of Jesus hanging on a cross so that through him we could be healed, so that we could be completely restored, so that we could be not just covered over, yeah. but completely made free. It says, if you're in Christ, you're a new creation, a brand new creation, never before been seen, who the sun sets free is free indeed, not just free a little bit, but free indeed. And I want to tell you today, that this is the best decision that I ever made in my yeah. life and, and the best decision, I'm sure Lionel would agree, in his life was to turn from sin, from, to turn from going our own way and to follow Jesus. It says that salvation is a free gift by grace through faith in, in him. But it's a free gift. You can't earn it. You don't deserve it. But it'll cost you everything. You need yeah. to lay down your whole life. He laid down his life for us. We need to lay down our life to follow him because the one thing that you hold on to is the one thing that you're, that's holding you back from him. And so I, I, I just had to share this before yeah. we pray this prayer because I don't want to make a lighthearted decision, a half-hearted yeah. decision. Come on. If, if you want to pray this prayer with me today, I want to let you know that it is going to cost you. And I believe that Holy Spirit right now is bringing conviction to you of things that you need to lay down so that you can follow Jesus because it will cost you everything. You need to lay down everything. It's a free gift, but it will cost you everything. But if everything that you have is worth nothing, and I guarantee you it is worth nothing because you came into this world naked and you will leave this world naked. You came into this world with nothing and you will leave with nothing. So if everything that you have is of, of no eternal value, the only thing that you have worth anything is your soul. Yeah. That's the only thing eternal and you have a choice to make now. Do you want to spend eternity away from God in hell or with him for eternity in heaven? That's the choice you need to make and it will cost you everything. But I tell you what. Once you receive his joy and his peace and his love and his freedom, you won't want what the <laughs> world's got to offer anyway. I guarantee it, and I'm sure that you yeah, agree. Absolutely. Uh, you won't want what the world's got anymore because what God is going to give you is so much better. So with that in mind, we're going to pray. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And if, and if you're ready to make this decision to give your life to Jesus, I encourage you to pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I believe. I believe. That you are God. That you are God. That you came. That you came. That you died that on you a cross. On a cross. That you were buried. That you were buried. And that you rose again on the third day. And that you rose again on the third day. I believe that you did this. I believe that you did this. So that I can be forgiven. So that I could be forgiven. So that I can be healed. So that I can be healed. So that I can be reconciled. So that I can be reconciled. Back into the relationship with you. Back into the relationship with you. That I was always meant to have. That I was always meant to have. Today I choose. Today I choose. To turn from going my own way. To turn from going my own way. And follow you and follow you. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. Making me a brand new creation. Making me a brand new creation. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Wash me. W wash me. And regenerate me. And regenerate me. Lead me in righteousness. Lead me in righteousness. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.